Welcome to the Rochester, New Hampshire History Podcast, a monthly show that will shine a light on a piece of history that has been all but forgotten. In a previous episode, we discussed the Korean War, and in particular, we looked at the experiences of Albert Pepin of Rochester. He survived some of the most deadly battles of the war and returned home to New Hampshire. I found another story of a Rochester man who also survived death-defying odds in the Korean War. The December 6, 1951 Rochester Courier has stories about Santa Claus arriving by helicopter, a hunter shooting a large bear, special shopping hours for Christmas, and a skater saving his buddy who fell through the ice. It also had a story titled, McDougal Hit by Own Buddies, Survives Wounds in Korean Fighting. The article is a letter written by Private Clifton McDougal. The letter was sent to his sister and describes in his own words a battle where he is wounded not only by the enemy but also by his own troops. Albert Einstein once said, older men start wars, but younger men fight them. Cliff was only 19 years old, just a teenager, fighting for his life in a hellish battlefield. Also, this newspaper article contains offensive words which have been bleeped out. Dear Odd, well, your little brother is just fine tonight. I'm not sure about going to the States now, but I'll never fight again. I'll tell you what happened to me. We went up to pick a Korean hill in the morning. I went through mortar and artillery shells, which scared me more than getting up on the... I reached the top of the hill where we went into some hand-to-hand fighting, but before we could get very close, they started running and throwing grenades. I didn't get hit, then we fell back and dug a trench and set up three machine guns, and it was getting dark. Nothing happened until one o'clock in the morning. Then there was a big screech and a burp gun opened near me. Well, I raised myself a little and emptied my rifle into the... Then we got out of the trench and started firing. Before I knew it, I got hit in the foot and in a hole. I started rubbing my foot and a grenade landed in the hole with me. It blew my helmet off, blew two fingers wide open, and put three splinters in my wrist, three pieces in my head, and split my knee open in two places. That fixed me, as I could not walk. We retreated, but I stayed in the hole until next morning. You almost lost me. As I had to stay there, I almost bled to death. Now here is something you won't believe. I was where the Chinese were. Three came over and looked at me. I was helpless. I had nothing to fight with, and I was so weak I could not move. They walked away, and I wondered why they did not kill me. They never came back. After that, I took a bandage I had and tied it to a stick, and somehow got to my feet. The Americans were in front of me, and I guess the Americans thought I was a because they threw a grenade. I fell to the ground and it missed me. I started hollering and they threw another. I could not move away from it. It got me in the same leg and ripped it open from knee to my big toe. I got up again and looked right at them and they noticed who I was and sent medics. I have about 50 stitches in me and I only weigh 100 pounds. My arm is tired and so I will close. Love, Cliff. I don't know the fate of Clifton McDougall. I hope he was able to return home and raise a family. I do know he was a brave soldier who never gave up in the face of overwhelming adversity. This ends the podcast. If you have any questions or comments, please email bobgriffinpodcast at gmail.com. And come back next month for another episode of Rochester, New Hampshire History.